Yo, what's good? It's your homeboy T Pain. Right now, at this very exact moment, you plugged in with Jay. Plugged in with Jay right now. This is Jay O'Man. Turn up, turn up, turn up. My boy Jay Perry. You listening to my boy Jay the Plug? My boy Jay the Plug. And you're listening to my boy Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy Jay the Plug. Jay the Plug. You got many winners for many moves. You're listening to my boy Jay the Plug. Get plugged up, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Plugged In with Jay. I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Deontay Burton, cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. How you doing, my man? I'm good, brother. Good on this Sunday morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, man. I appreciate you responding and, and reaching back out to me, man. It's kind of tough to get anybody to respond nowadays, so I appreciate I know you're busy. No worries, no worries. <laughs> All right, so something I, I was uh, doing my research. It's one thing I always try to do. You were born in Berlin, Germany. Yes, sir. Uh, exactly military right. family. That okay. So I was going to ask: Was it? It's so. Did dad, mom was in the military? Both. Both. Both actually. So I was born in. I was born in Berlin. My brother was born in uh, Stuttgart. I believe my sister was born there too. So yeah, got dual citizenship. Born across the pond. That's a great man. Okay. What brought yeah. you to the state? I understand military. Like, was it, were they stationed here? Yeah. So they were stationed over there and then they got stationed back over here. And sure. so we came home, uh, lived a couple places, lived in Georgia, Florida, bounced around a little bit, ended up in Kansas. That was great, man. Yeah. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia right now. And I know, uh, I know whenever you started your football life, man, your career, you started off with the Atlanta Falcons. Is that right? Yes, sir. You're in Atlanta now. I saw the 404 number. I love it out there. I just uh, just finished up my house out there. I'll be moving in like two weeks. Oh, man. Okay, cool. Maybe eventually we link up and do this face to face. For sure. Brother. For sure. So t- so you went you were undrafted free agent, got picked up by the yes, Atlanta sir. Falcons. Um, if you wouldn't mind, take us through your football life, man. How like uh, how'd you end up with Dallas? What everything in between, if you don't mind? Okay. Um, started out at Kansas State. Uh, played right in my own backyard. It's not far, five minutes from my house. Um, played receiver all through college. Went to uh, the Atlanta Falcons, undrafted. Um, ended up playing receiver all through preseason, and right after that, uh, Dan Quinn and that staff switched me over to play corner. And so that was an adjustment, you know, those first couple of days, just watching Julio Jones run right past me and, you know, trying to guard Sanu and Hardy and, and Turbo was there. So it was just a rough, a rough go, but it, it made me the player I am today. So, you know, I go through that um, whole year practice squad. Next year, I come back and go through camp. Uh, week one, I'm on the opening roster. Um, get in a little bit, play a little bit. The next week they go to put me on practice squad. Green Bay picks me up off waivers. And after that, man, I just kind of went on a journey. I went from Green Bay to back to Atlanta to Houston to Indy to I was in Seattle for like a week. I just, I had been everywhere, you know, bounced around, finally landed in Dallas and kind of feel like I got a home for myself here. I like it here. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I've uh, we lived in Austin, Texas for a little while. Been to that stadium; it's unbelievable, man. Was it? Was it like? What was it like walking into that thing for the first time? Was it intimidating at all? Oh my goodness! Oh, for sure, man. We played a night game there. You're talking about uh, DK Royal Stadium or Daryl K, the one in Austin? The, no, 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 the one in in Dallas. The uh, oh, uh, AT and T. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude! This Jerry does it big. He does everything real big. So like, <laughs> you walk in, you see that massive screen. Um, it's like the, one of the nicest stadiums. Even our practice facility is one of the nicest facilities I've ever been in. It's like a museum. You're afraid to touch stuff just because it's all <laughs> put together so well, so nice. And everything he does is for the betterment of the players in the program. So it's just like, dude, everything is top notch. Nutrition, yeah. the bathrooms, the, the <laughs> locker rooms. Like, good Lord, man. But. <laughs> he does it well, but it's it's a shock, and you're you're definitely blessed to be in there. You can look at all the other guys that come through there, all everything that you're allowed to be around. It's a cool thing. Yeah, man, that's cool. And that's that's the Jones that everybody's talking about trying to keep up with the Joneses. That dude has got it set up. Seriously, it's definitely he's, you got to respect it. 
Oh, for sure, man. He's one of the most intriguing people in the NFL, man. He's, he's, he's awesome. I'm a, I'm a fan of Jerry Jones. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you were saying you've been with a few teams in your career. Is that something that, that, does that, does that play well with like making yourself feel pretty good about yourself because you know, so many teams are, are right there to grab you or does it kind of mess with your dynamic as far as like, damn, man, why can't somebody just hold on to me? Man, that's honestly, you hit it on the head. It's, it's a little bit of both. Um, it's always nice to feel needed, you know? So yeah. like when you're bouncing from team to team, you're like, well, at least somebody wants me. <laughs> and you also sometimes feel like, you guys sure you don't want to just keep me here? Like, I kind of like it here. So uh, it, it plays its role, but I think once you kind of get out of the, you get out of that mindset of like permanence, like thinking like, all right, this is going to be the spot I'm going to be for the forever. Like I'm going to finish my career here. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do that here. And you just take it to the day by day. You, right. you, you save yourself a lot of unnecessary stress. I think early in my career, I was in that later mindset of like, man, why didn't anyone want me? And then I hit the point of like, okay, well, at least people do want me. And now, man, I'm just like, yeah, I still got a job. So just enjoy it. Have fun with it. I'm playing a game. So it's not yeah. too much to be worried about. Yeah, absolutely, man. It doesn't seem like you spend too much time without a without a number and a name on the back of a jersey, man. So it's it's a blessing. You, yeah, you get scooped up quick. Uh, so I've, I've got a, I've always been interested in this. Like anytime I've had like a defensive player or anything on the show, I always ask like who anybody you've had to guard, anybody you've had to post up on, <laughs> to, to, who is the toughest? Um, just I would say from all the receivers I've gotten to watch. Uh, up close I was in Green Bay so I got to watch Devontae Adams I was in Houston I watched Hop go to work right um Indy watching T.Y. run was was cool but I would have to say it had to be Julio um just his size and speed the difference is is crazy compared to other people it's just yeah especially coming into the league I was like I hope not all football players are like this (laughs) like I'll never fit in because I mean he's it's like a power forward running a you know a four three just flying down the field and other than that he can jump out of the gym he's huge so it uh it definitely was one of those one of the few times in my nfl career that i was like oh that's just a freak like no one else can do that <laughs> dude is otherworldly man i've never seen anybody that size and be able to make the cuts and run the route city it's it's unbelievable Absurd. it's unbelievable turn on a dime um so you so talking about Julio as you know all this stuff has been going on with Crazy. him leaving out of you know possibly getting out of Atlanta which it sounds to me which honestly I don't know I, you know everybody has different you know different ideas and thoughts on the matter but it seems to me like Shannon Sharp kind of had that set up I don't know I don't know man Bailey's barking in the background <laughs> <laughs> As, so what do you think about it? That seemed a little a little crazy, right? You think you yeah. say something to somebody on live TV, like, hey, you're on live TV. You might not want to say right. something too reckless. Yeah, you would think that he would say something like, hey, man, just kind of kind of chill with it. It's, it. Nobody would – who in their right mind would really do that, make that phone yeah. call and put them on speaker? I'm wondering if everybody knew about it. That just, was another question. You know, it's, I mean, do you uh, do you watch the Pat McAfee show at all? Oh yeah. So have you ever noticed that when Pat calls those guys, he's you know, hey, we're on, you know, we're live right now. Yeah. And then even they get a little dicey, but yeah, you, I think you got to respect the you know the disclaimer. But yeah, maybe that was his way of getting sure. it out. For sure, you never and, know. And suppo- they're close enough to where Julio calls, you know, Uncle Shannon, which most people do or whatever, but. He knows that his show runs at a specific time, I'm sure. And whenever you hear Skip Bayless in the background, I don't think Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless are kicking it after the show. I didn't think about that. That's a great <laughs> point. I you know what I mean? If he even says what's up to Skip, that. you can hear him. It's, I don't know. It's, it's very, if they did plan it, I mean, that's like WWE type, like showmanship. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> get no, it's, it's, a, it's a great way of saying you, you want to be out. You want to trade. Mm-hmm. Without, like somebody's uh, the formalities of talking to the front office and the agents let me say it myself that's exactly what i was saying the other day i was saying he probably did that and being like i had no idea and shannon was probably like dude this is great for tv i'm definitely into this and i'll just act like you didn't know and it was my bad what are they gonna do fire shannon sharp no 
Great for ratings. Great for all parties included. So hundred percent. Hundred percent. And what was funny though is like one of your teams that they mentioned is your team now, yeah, the Cowboys. And I was like, man, I wanted to ask you. I mean, do you think there's any possibility for Julio to go to the Cowboys? If anybody's willing to pony up, man, Jerry's that guy. I mean, I think, in all honesty, we can all agree Jerry's going to get what Jerry wants, just how he does business. And I think right. you got to respect that. And mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't make those decisions. Sure. Really. I don't have the money to make those decisions. I don't have the say, the power or the pull to right. be even in the room when those are made. But, <laughs> you know, I'm sure any team that has the opportunity to have Julio Jones on their roster is is very likely to take that. Absolutely. Yeah. They be, and what's it's like what what McAfee says on his show, whenever it happens, other teams are going to be out there like we could have done that. We could have given we would have been willing to give this up for Julio. I mean, it, this is the thing. You could literally say first round pick and everybody's saying, oh, well, his knees and his age. It's Julio Jones. He's going to give you an opportunity oh. to get to a Super Bowl immediately. Exactly. Immediately. I think there's a few players in this league that teams are, you know, they sell off whatever they got to sell off to have and oh. um, there's just a few guys out there that teams will, will go ahead and be like i don't care if that's what you want you can have the keys to my house Ser yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> who do you, do you think there's anybody in the running like that that's ahead of the pack i hear like the ravens are really making a push for them um gosh Man, the ravens I, and the Colts. i have no idea i no. I mean, I know just as about as you guys. I watch, you know, every now and then I'll turn the TV on and be like, well, this is who they're talking about. But I think when it comes to those front office things and, and the trades and things like that, I just, I've never been a part of it. Right. Never been traded and everything like that. But I, I just assume that it's, you're talking about billion dollar corporations. So you got to think things are vetted, things are handled, things are, are dealt with in, in such a, a manner that like, I don't think much is a surprise to them. So I'm sure there's somebody or some team out there that's already like, okay, we're going to do X. And right. if we can get it done before somebody else, that's what's going to happen. So I'm sure us so on the outside, we're probably four or five steps behind. Oh, for sure. But we, well, yeah, we love to think that we're four or five steps ahead. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody on Twitter will be like, oh, I heard, I saw him wearing this and that. Like, <laughs> right. The Cowboys jersey. <laughs> my man might have needed a hoodie at the time and he's like that's right, fine yeah the hoodie the hoodie oh uh, another one and i know you're still me you're not really sure but I, i'm just i'm fascinated to hear about players opinions another guy that you played with aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. um it's looking like he might be on his way out of green bay i still think that they're gonna make it happen for him just because i think they'd be crazy not to they'd probably burn that place to the ground those fans yeah but uh, I mean, do you, are there any, I understand that, that you're not part of any of that stuff, but I mean, do you have any kind of inklings in your brain, like where he might go if he doesn't stay in Green Bay? Like the Broncos or something, maybe? Um, the one thing I do think about Aaron Rodgers is I love his approach to the media. It is probably one of the coolest approaches I've ever seen from like a, a player of that stature. Um, sure. Again, on the McAfee show, when he, when they read that quote about him talking about like, I just kill him with indifference. Like, if I have to respond to everything somebody says about me, like I'll be miserable. And so right. the fact that he's like, nah, I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Play football when I need to play football. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. that's, a, that's an approach that I think so many guys can learn from. And it's, it's admirable, but where he goes and how they do that, what they have going on in their house. I have no idea. It doesn't look good from the, right. the outside in, but you never know what right. these phone calls are, what these these are. But I mean, there's again, that's another guy that teams would be like, yeah, you have whatever you want, come play here. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I wish that it's who was it? Uh, Stephen A. Smith was talking about him, and they were like, man, the Saints should make a play for him. I'm like, come on, I've been a Saints <laughs> fan since I was a kid, man. I'm like, come on, come on. They and they're, they're known. The Saints are known to give up everything for somebody they want. That's true. Look at Ricky Williams, my God. Mm -hmm. Favorite players, man. They they sold the farm for Ricky. Oh yeah, that was Way unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Um, so I'm a big like I started off everything like my my podcast and everything like that or the show and the interviews and stuff by being a big fan of fantasy football and putting everything out there. I always ask my guests, and either way, there's no wrong answer to this. But what are your thoughts on fantasy football? I love it. I think. I mean, honestly, 
I've never played it. My friends play it, and it's to the extent that they like have a go out of the state for a draft. They hold like huge parties. <laughs> I love the loser it. has to do these like outrageous things. But like I've never really played it. But I I think it's so cool that it gives like gives fans a chance to be like their own GM. You know what I mean? It just gives yeah. them. Granted, I feel like it's literally probably the farthest thing from being an actual GM or from being like <laughs> into. <laughs> what's right. going on because i mean anytime <laughs> you can say like oh well aaron Rodgers is my quarterback and julio jones is my receiver it's like all right well it's a yeah. fantasy for sure but <laughs> i think it's i think it's cool man and it, it keeps people in tune in the sport in a different way i know probably you know guys like you and some other guys who actually love the game for the game you know love the players love yeah. the, the x and o's the schematics of it and then there's people who just love like the the gm part there's people who love the i can move this piece and that piece and this piece and it's their way of, of reining people in and i know so many people who are fans of football because of fantasy mm-hmm. and I, anything that brings people to a game that i love i'm for it man DraftKings, awesome. whatever you're doing bring it in and and watch the game love the game yeah that's awesome man yeah Got a, I just talked to Jacoby Jones and he hates it. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's and I, I the reason being too is I, I get it. I understand like why somebody would like a player would because you have these people who just take it too far and they're like, you screwed my fantasy team, man. You should have got me more. Po-. I mean, do we, they're pro athlete. Y'all, y'all owe us nothing. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a special take <laughs> for fans. Like I, um, I think as we all have to understand, it's like a privilege, like as privileged as we are to play this child's game is ransom. I also think it's like a privilege to be a fan of a team. I think because you live in proximity to a billion dollar corporation, you don't get the say some of the things you say to other human beings, you don't get to feel the, yeah, you, you got to taper, you know, the things that come out of your mouth or the things that you type about another adult because that's somebody's father son husband right. and likewise it's you know women's sports that's somebody's wife that's somebody's daughter mm-hmm. but like your proximity to a team doesn't allow you like i don't care if you live in boston you don't get to say what you feel like you need to say to a Kyrie irving when he was there or a marcus smart like just you live down the street relax watch the game 100 <laughs> percent, i love it um, if you weren't playing in the NFL, what do you think? Like, do you have any other passions? Like any, like, I know some guys are artists, some rap, you know, things like, is there anything else that you'd be doing besides being a football yeah, player? I love, I love music. I'm not musically inclined. I can't really play an instrument. I used to play the trumpet. My mom made me play the piano as a kid. Oh, yeah. Um, like, you know, music. I love movies. I could watch movies. I love to sit and critique movies and shoot the shit with my buddies about them. There you go. Um, Art, art is probably one of my biggest things. Uh, one day I went up in a gallery, hopefully in Atlanta. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, man, just kind of expect people to, there's so many different styles of art, so many different different emotions art evokes for people. And I would just love to have a place where people can come and, you know, check something out. And I mean, the value of art, honestly, is all in which you'll pay for it. So exactly. you know, million dollar art, you know, but just come in and see something that you're like, man, I... I like that and I maybe I want it. And just to have a place where people can do that is something I'd love to facilitate down the road. That's that's dope, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you ever get a gallery, man, let me know, man. I'll, I'll come put a pair of my shoes up. <laughs> I would love it. Like, that's, a, that's a thing, man. I have friends who paint clothes and graffiti, paint shoes. Like it's however you can put your art on whatever you can put your art on. I have a deep appreciation for it. That's awesome. Yeah, man. If you ever open up a gallery, please let me know. I will definitely be the first one in line to, to, to walk in. For sure, man. I appreciate awesome. that, brother. Uh, so almost finished up, my man. I know you got good stuff going. I see the moving boxes behind you. Is that because you're coming to, to ATL? Is, we are on our way, brother. We're breaking down this apartment now. So All we'll right, man. Soon. All right. Excited to have you back in town, brother. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Do you have any... Do you have any, and this is always a question that that kind of stumps most of the guys on my show, uh, any specific memories from your career so far? I know it's 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 not a, a long career yet. Um, you're still pretty young in the league, but do you have anything that has happened that 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 you wax nostalgic on or anything that just like, you know, catches you, puts you in a good mood, bad mood, um, crazy? 
I wouldn't say anything crazy. Uh, I think there's a couple, like I like to call them like just little checkpoints that I've hit in my my football career, you know, <laughs> scoring my first touchdown in college, playing on TV, hearing, you know, hearing my name on ESPN, little things like that. Um, when I got into the NFL, um, I remember just kind of being in the locker room for the first time. I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, this is something I thought about as a kid and yeah. like always imagined or wondered what it would be like. And so then you get there and it's like you have that, that opportunity to just be present in that moment right there where you're like, man, okay. You know, you just take it in like, all right, I got here. So then you go for your next check mark. And, and it was, I'm out there practicing. I'm out there running with these guys and then getting into my first game. And it's like, oh, this is a real game. This is for the money. So like I'm out there playing and I'm out there with all pros. I'm out there playing against guys who've been in Pro Bowls. So it's just like to, to try to not look too far ahead of it, but Every time I hit like a little check mark or a little little checkpoint, like I'm climbing this mountain of success that I, I have planned out for myself, I try to be as present as I can right there and just be sure. like, shit, that's cool. Like I never want to be too cool for it, you know? I think sure, yeah. Social media and all that shit. It's it's easy to be like, yeah, man, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do that. But it's still like <laughs> yeah. there's six year old me out there that was like, remember when you want to do this shit? Like it's cool, bro. So it's yeah, uh, man. I try to embrace it and, you know, hopefully I got a couple more to keep chipping away down the road and, and have those same feelings. Man, that's, that's got to be one of my favorite answers I've gotten to that, that question. For real. Appreciate like, it, seriously, man. it's always good to, to keep that, that childlike wonder to it. Hit that's those right. milestones and just take it all in. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Has, there any been, has there been anybody yet that you've been like on the field with and you've been like, oh shit, like that's, this, but that's Julio Jones, or that's his. Have you been? Have you been? Um, game wise, the game wise, the first time I, in Houston, we ended up. I got in. We we're playing Philly. Um, it was early too, and I just caught myself looking around. I was like, Tyron Matthew and JJ Watt. Like what? Because <laughs> I remember just being a kid, and like everyone wanted to be Ty. Like yeah, who didn't want to wear seven? Who didn't want to be the Honey Badger? So. Just like for that brief moment when I was able to stand there and look like, okay, he's to my left. And I looked in front of me and JJ Watts got his hand in the dirt. And I'm like, I'm just out here with these dudes just running around. And uh, so that was, that was a wild moment. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that even in being in our locker room now, like being able to, to talk with Dak and Zeke and just be like, these dudes are guys you saw on TV and they're not much older than me, you know, right. but it's still like, you know, the dude's worth a hundred and something million dollars. Like it's just a, <laughs> it's a crazy, it's a crazy dynamic to think like you went from sitting on your couch, watching these guys on TV being like, man, this dude's killing it in the national championship or some huge bowl game to be like, no, it's just my teammate. Now we, yeah. you know, go over there and shoot the shit. So, yeah, that's dope, man. I know that I know this is probably going to be more of a political answer. Cause I mean, I, you know, you seem like a real down to earth, cool, real chill dude. So I, I can't imagine you would say anything negative um who on your roster right now who is the toughest receiver to cover on your like is it is it Amari is it is it CD man they're all they're all freaks and a different <laughs> nature um it's hard to get a hand on Coop like I mean just to even touch him so that's that's difficult then you got CD who just has incredible ball skills so that is another Another thing, but I would honestly say, and he's probably one of my closest friends on the team, good dude, is is Mike, Michael Gallup. Yeah. Like you can grab him, you can jump on his back, you can hold him, and somehow, some way, he finds a way to catch this ball. Yeah, man. And um, he's got one of, like, in my opinion, some of the freakiest, like, spatial awareness. You throw it to Mike in a vacuum, and he finds a way to – flip his hands and he comes down with it and I think he's been doing it since college he played at uh Butler Community College which wasn't far from K-State so we kind of knew each other there and then when he went to Colorado State I remember watching some of his games <laughs> and I always just had a respect for like from playing receiver just like a respect for the catches that he made in the positions that he did it and so to watch him do it in the pros and to guard him and we have some good battles in practice but to watch him and kind of be a part of it on the other side now, I still kind of like, God damn, Mike, like how did you <laughs> do that? <laughs> it's just, he's probably, I mean, you think I'm chill. Mike is sunny in 75 all the time. Mike never, never is upset. 
never too happy. He's just always – him and I just laugh constantly about nothing. But he, in my opinion, is probably one of the most underrated yet talented receivers in the NFL. Ah, uh, man, I got to agree. We, in, in fantasy football, the thing is with fantasy is, like, you become a player fan. Mm-hmm. Well, like I, you know, I'm I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I've been a Saints fan since I was a kid. I mean, I've got a, I've got a bag that my my grandfather bronze that had the holes in the eyes when I was just from yeah the- back in the day <laughs> yeah man but way, yeah way back and it, being being in fantasy football like really liking fantasy football and fuck with that it it makes you a player fan and a big like an even bigger fan of the NFL and Michael Gallup is one of those players that I was always like man if y'all have an opportunity draft this dude. Because he is a freak. You put the ball anywhere around him. You're absolutely right. Spatial awareness. I mean, this dude looks like a ballerina in the air, just like he's twisting himself. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. But yeah. I man. love that. I love that you said that, that it made you a fan of the player. And I mm-hmm. think a lot of people look past the player. You're always looking for like either the touchdowns, the stats, the production, the money. But to, yeah. to actually be a fan of the human being under the helmet, I think is like a, is a very underrated thing for someone to say so man i appreciate that oh absolutely man if it's if you if you take anything away from the show man it's i I try to make sure that everybody can learn a little bit more about the person behind the jersey than just the you know just being the player on the field and i love hearing that that, that mike is just always in a good mood and that's you know that just seems like everything's carefree for him he's just that that type of person it's awesome i love hearing stuff like that that's my favorite type of stuff but man, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on this show, man. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for, for having me, man. Oh, yeah, just, I really appreciate it, brother. Absolutely. And whenever you get to the ATL, we got to have it face to face, man. We'll go grab a drink or something. And, and, and let me know, brother. All right, man. Thank you so much, Deontay Burton. My pleasure to have you on. Y'all have been tuned in to Plugged In with Jay. This is my man, Deontay Burton. Thank you again, brother. Great groovy, my man. Uh-huh.